<laughs> you have to do it together, one, two. <laughs> there <you go. sighs> Allora. Welcome to our reality. Thank you so much for having me. My pleasure. Thanks My pleasure. for dressing me for I'm the occasion. Sorry, Perfectly unplanned. <laughs> you came to the right place. Imagine exactly. If, yeah. Imagine if I was a magician. <laughs> or a singer. <laughs> exactly. Like yeah. a... I was like, oh, fuck. So I, for, to put some context, Thanks to Swiss Air, I lost my suitcase with all my clothes on my way here. What a perfect way to, you know, I don't need to buy anything. I just come straight into the studio. <laughs> just go raid everything. <laughs> exactly. Go to the PR office and get whatever you want. Yeah, and you have and brand colors as well, which I love also looking at around the studio. Lots of yellow and pink, of course. Anyway, we're here to talk about music and the soundtrack to your life. Um, and why don't we start with what's your earliest significant musical memory that shaped your sound? Hmm. I think it was, of course, Italian music. Mm -hmm. Like... But my parents were always very good on music, so I would say Mina, oh, oh, like that. Parole, Parole, Parole. Uh -huh. But is that actually yeah. something already not beyond cheese, like something no, in other cultures? Well, growing see? up, it was really on trend. Like, I mean, my yeah. parents are from the 50s, so uh -huh. all the classic Italian music was really echoing in my house. I think also lots of Beatles, lots of Dire Straits. Mm. My father was a huge record keeper like literally would keep all the records that yeah. you could find around the world so dark side of the moon was one of the most played i honestly remember lots of beatles lots of english music duran duran as well uh -huh. david bowie so i would say the earliest would be we would have to play parola of course we yeah need to do. i would do but like <laughs> una parola ancora parole 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 ascoltami parole 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 ti prego I know it's very difficult, but how would you describe yourself in three songs? Who are you in? Three songs? Yeah. I, yeah, I didn't plan any of this. Yeah, no, you know, yeah, I'm going to put you on a spot now. Um, <laughs> like, I'm king of pop, if I can describe myself in yeah. one way. Like, I, I, I love everything that is commercial and pop. It's always been like that. Mm. Like, I, I had such a big knowledge of music and movie. Like, I love soundtracks. Uh -huh. Like, one of my obsessions is, like, all the soundtracks from the movies. So, I would say, sure, and Zimmer. Yeah, one it pop that defines me. Which one's in What soundtrack should we play? I would play Inception. Okay. The really chaotic and like dark movie. So now in the third one, I'm in the very indecisive giving you a cartoon soundtrack because I'm really grew up obsessed with cartoons or a K-pop music. Why don't we do both? <laughs> so when I was at college, because I studied in China for one year and a half, my favorite song was 2NE1, Mega Che Chalanga, You're the Best. Right. Yeah. Is, that, is that with CL? Yeah, hey, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And Ooh. when I met CL for the first time, I was so starstruck because oh, literally that was the song I was obsessed with. And I would keep singing and singing to her this song in a really bad Korean accent. <laughs> and she'd be like, you're not saying anything, stop. Oh my God. I'm 
I would say my third song is a Gaga song. Okay. I really like Judas. Judas, 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 Gaga. Just because I'm from a Catholic background, so that would make sense for me just to close this puzzle. I could tell you Spice Girls. Which track? I think Viva Forever was really traumatic can, moment of my life. I can totally see that. Viva yeah. Forever. Like the little fairy tale. <laughs> Listen, I always say the soundtrack to our lives, it changes, uh, it's nothing is definite, you know, like just the way our moods in the morning, the way you pick a color yeah. wearing or whatever, extra accessory, same thing. This has always been my obsession with classic soundtracks, I don't know why, but like I have days in which I feel super pop and like energized and like into the mood to like create and go really kawaii. Yeah. And then other days that I only listen to Mozart, Beethoven. Or like, um, there was this movie called Ex Machina. Mm -hmm. It's such a beautiful soundtrack that I always play when I have to create futuristic things. For me, and this is something that I always say to people, because people say, what's the thing that inspires you I was the about most? to ask, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, literally, but this is it's one of the first It's such a generic question. Yes, it's such a generic <laughs> question, yeah. but I never know how to answer, because yeah, yeah. at the end of the day, I get inspired by everything. Yeah. But when I have to come up with something, that it could be like, collection or a mood board, I always play soundtrack from movies. I don't know why. The Moulin Rouge was also a big soundtrack of my life. Is that because the movie soundtracks are usually a supporting cast to a mise-en-scene in general? Right? I think so, because they're connected to images. My memory and the, the way I my brain in-store things, like uh, the storage of my brain is made by images. So mm -hmm. that's why I can speak Chinese. For me, it was really easy and people would say, how come it's so easy? I was like, because they're all characters. So I just see them, write them, and I remember oh, wow. them. Okay. And the same was for creating things. I would just play music over and over and come up with this idea or images in my mind that would shuffle, and then you just come up with something new. Interesting. Yeah. I mean, kudos to you also for picking up Chinese in such a short time. It's amazing. <laughs> it wasn't a short time. Honestly, people... A year and a half? But I studied in the college in ah, Italy. Okay. Then I moved to China. Then okay. I spent three more years okay. after college. Okay, okay. And I was a waiter in a bar, a waiter in a restaurant. I used to be a, not a go-go boy, but, <laughs> <laughs> but literally I was serving and entertaining Rich Chinese at tables. <laughs> like just okay. Like this is one of the things that I enjoyed the most. The my seems like, oh wow, he's an escort, but I'm not. <laughs> it was just that like Asian people most of the time enjoy the conversation with European people, but European people cannot 
speak up their language. Mm -hmm. So for me, it was really like a fun and like way of making money. <laughs> <laughs> wow, I love it. Okay, which Chinese track should we play? I'm so curious now. I honestly didn't have many. Like I remember this song, but I don't even know the title. There was just saying "Wo Hai Ni," that means "I love you," and <laughs> kept saying "Wo Hai Ni," and over and over for like lots of times. But once I went to the Beijing Opera in uh -huh. Beijing, I couldn't understand one single word. But the costumes and the lyrics and, and that, that's some of the tunes I play when I want to go back to China. But I, I, I this is a fun thing. I never had a favorite Chinese song or track. When I was studying in China, the cinema industry was getting really big, mm. magazine industry, but never music. Like, I don't know, I'm, I mean, not for me. Recently, I was watching Rich Asian. No, what's the name? Naval oh, uh, uh, Super Crazy. Uh, super Crazy uh, Rich crazy Asian. Crazy Super. Oh that was a big yeah. And <laughs> I discovered that there's so many tracks that are really good, so I would sing along while, while the movie was playing. <laughs> now, they, I didn't know that part about you with China, and everything makes so much sense looking around your studio, yeah. the, the colors as well, the poppiness. Yeah, that's something that people always like, as soon as they meet me and they know a little bit more about me, they are like, oh, it makes sense now. <laughs> <laughs> Like, you're not completely stupid. There's something going on in your mind. <laughs> like, oh. <laughs> well, well, congrats on, on your label. Uh, we're here in your studio. For any young budding entrepreneur or young creative, how do you take a vision, an idea, and turn into actually into a tangible thing? My answer <laughs> is that you really have to work hard. Yeah. Like the idea that something is gonna realize just because you have a dream, it's such a stupid thing. If you really, really work your ass off, it's gonna come to life. First of all, you have to love it. As every job you're gonna do in your life, if you don't love it enough, at some point you're gonna drop the idea of make of turning it into reality. And mm. instead, I was really passionate about this world. And I had to go through hell to arrive where I am. Literally, I studied political sciences. Then I moved to China and I studied Chinese languages and culture. And then I moved back and I started a shitty work in fashion. And then I moved back to China and then I started just to stay afloat, literally paying for my life. But I always had this dream. Even if I didn't have money, I would keep buying magazines. I would mm. keep buying clothes. I would keep buying fabrics. So when I finally moved back from China, I didn't have so much money. And I had to choose which things to ship back and which oh. not. And I chose to go for fabrics and not for items. Interesting. There was something that I said, so maybe it's true. You really like fashion. You really like this industry in a, in a way that it, it's a passion. And then the beginning of the brand, the middle of the brand, today of the brand, it's always like you got to keep doing better and better. It never stops. The more you do good, it's going to be more and more and more work. So if you're ready to that intensity and to be carried away by all of this, because at the end it turns your life, like the life of the clothes are your life in the mm. end, you can do it. Well, there you go. It's <laughs> not so much like people think it's about money, but I can ensure I had no money. <laughs> Honestly, it's more about uh, how, ma how dedicated you are to this. What track is based on the soundtrack of GCDF? I have two tracks that are part of my heart. First one was my first show, uh -huh. and it's a song called Sometimes at Night. Oh, wait. Sometimes at Night, yeah. I'm hitting for you. I'll send it to you because I well, don't know. We will be playing it. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the second one is yeah. We Live in La Dolce Vita. Because it was, exactly, because it was my soundtrack of my first New York show. Basically, New York Fashion Week invited me to do a show in New York. What year was that? 2016, 2017, mm -hmm. I think. 2018, maybe. I have no idea. I can check. Mm -hmm. I had this track for... Uh, We're living like in a Dolce Vita. Because I was like... I, that was the feeling I was going through. So it was this summer collection. I was happy because someone was paying for my show. I was given a chance. Yeah. And so I was like, I want this song. That's still something I play before shows. Or like when I have to remind me why I'm doing this. And I'm thinking to myself like... Go for it. It's like your Dolce Vita. You've always been... You came back from the other side of the world to do this job. So it's your Dolce Vita made in Italy and whatever it takes. We're walking like in the Dolce Vita. This time we got it right. We're living like in the Dolce Vita. Mm, not a dream tonight. We're dancing like in the Dolce Vita. Made in the Dolce Vita Nobody else 
Well, you do a lot of collabs as well. Yeah. How do you approach a collaboration? Like, is there a process or just like, I like this person, I like this brand, this object, why don't we? I think up? honestly, lots of the things I've done is because I call it to the universe. Like, ah, when I first started this brand, manifestation. Yeah, yeah, manifestation, I think it was the key for myself. Because when I started, one of my first collection was a patch. I had this denim pants with lots of patches and stuff and there were lots of brand on it that of course I didn't have any any type of like licensing <clears throat> so there was Jurassic Park which the soundtrack is one of my favorites there you go <laughs> and uh, I had Pepsi that was sexy or I don't remember maybe it was Pepsi I, I, I don't maybe it was GCDS with the logo of Pepsi and then they approached me <sighs> Uh, so I think, but was that already public? Do you put, that was already? Yeah, it was out everywhere. I sold so many of those pieces, but I was still in a garage by myself producing thirty pieces. So none of it. I was just sued by a couple of them. <laughs> 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 and, uh, okay, it's but then like they all happened. came back to yeah, me. Yeah. So I was like, okay, cool. It's kind of what how Depper then made it, right? In yeah. the beginning, like that's exactly yeah. the same thing. Copy. But it was so I never thought like there were they were all my there was the Pink Panther, Woody Woodpecker patch, McDonald patch. Like it was a mix and match of my favorite pop culture uh -huh. items that I was so naive to think, oh, I can use them. They're not gonna sue me. Eh? And then some of them sued me, but then they came back to me for a collaboration. Interesting. So first I sue you and then just to make a statement. No, I, not that. Not that easy. They actually try to make money. Yeah? They are actually I don't trying think to get money out of you. I realized that they sued me in the past, but <laughs> oh, no, I think <laughs> okay. it was just like mm, camouflage. <laughs> okay, so it took a, uh, there was some time between getting sued and actually yeah, doing yeah, a collab. Yeah, okay. it's a five to six years panel. Oh, panel. I see. <laughs> okay, okay. So you first no, have to pay. No, honestly, my collaboration are uh, things that I love. Mm. Like even SpongeBob last year for this mm -hmm. year for spring summer for me is last year because I designed last year. Yeah. This year spring summer twenty three was spawn dedicated to SpongeBob because they were like I did so many cartoons in my life because I really love cartoons. And at some point I was like, okay, this is my last shot with cartoons. Who would I like to dedicate it to? Why? Why you just like this is. You just don't, don't want to continue. You know, You've you, done it. You, I've done it. So mm -hmm. even for my creativity, just to to to. Make evolve. something to yeah, evolve, yeah, yeah. to make new things and not be the guy of cartoons in the end <laughs> of the day. And uh, and I said, okay, I'm going to do SpongeBob Couture. That's what I want to do. Because when I was at college in China mm -hmm. and I was passing an exam of doing something good for my career, I would buy myself like something from SpongeBob. So by mm -hmm. the end of the year in China, I had tablecloth, tables, cups, <laughs> pants, pajamas, everything branded SpongeBob. So I was like, okay, I, I got to do this. For him. For him, not yeah. for yourself. No, for him. <laughs> it was just a devotion. We should play the SpongeBob, the SpongeBob soundtrack, soundtrack please. Are you ready, kids? Aye, aye, Captain! I can't hear you! Aye, aye, Captain! Oh! <laughs> Who lives in a pineapple under the sea? SpongeBob SquarePants! Absorbent and yellow and porous is he? SpongeBob If not a good nonsense, be something you wish. So another friend of ours who we just briefly mentioned, Dua, of course, mm -hmm. Dua Lipa, who is also on our show for our listeners who haven't listened to that episode yet. <laughs> you have these beautiful relationships with all these answers that most brands would chop off their right arm for. Like, yes, Dua, Beyonce, Madonna, and so forth. 
How? No. <laughs> How did you do it? No, no, no. Um, do a story is really fun. And do a story well, that's what I was going to go. It's like, give me some fun little anecdote how they came together, yeah. but also which are your favorite tracks from all these three. But oh. start there. <laughs> um, so, Duo is it's really genuinely, deeply, emotionally my best friend. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't see her like Dua Lipa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just perceive her as the girl I call when I have problems. Yeah. Or the girl that calls me when we have to chit chat about something. Yeah. It just happened, like, I think at this point, seven to eight years ago, my brand was really, really small. I used to do only t shirt and, like, she had her first tour going on, but it was not even a tour. Mm-hmm. Like, literally, she was Couple just doing gigs. promotion yeah. and gigs around the world. And she did it all with my t shirt saying basic, outline. Mm-hmm. But when you know someone before fame, and when you truly know someone, they stay in your mind and your mm-hmm. feelings as what they were. Yeah, you cannot see them for what they become. Of course. Not. So I think for me, she's a mirror of staying normal, humble, and like keep the good feelings of when you're normal for in the eye of the people. Yeah. That's the, that's what changes. Like yourself, I mean myself, I'm still the same. She's still the same, oh. but in the public eye, of you course. are the designer. Exactly. You're the millionaire. Yeah. You are the all things that don't matter so much. Absolutely. Like Dua is really still such a beautiful soul and yeah. down to earth and super chill. Um, but so. on on the on the same page, I'm so blessed because she reached a success, amazing, and a fame yeah. that I can only look up to yeah. and uh, and and learn. Most of the time, I observe, I ask questions. I'm mm-hmm. like, "How did you do this? What did you do that? How, how's the promotion? When it's gonna launch?" Just not because I want to know. Like, of course, I want to know what's happening in her life, but also because I'm curious yeah. to see this huge, big mechanism of the the music industry that Absolutely. most of the time is like fashion industry. We don't know anything about. Yeah, it's true. And also, like with any good friends, that's what friends are for. You have yeah. these conversations. And usually when you surround yourself with more successful people, general successful people in whatever field, of course you ask questions. And you, of course you want to kind of... I was saying this in yesterday's interview with Anna. It's like the, the three things that I always sell on social media is like sex, comedy, humor, and uh, how the sausage is being made. You know, like literally <laughs> looking yeah, at how things are being done, looking behind the curtain, peeking down the curtain. Which hopefully we'll do in a minute as well. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you have to show us how the sausage, yeah, sausage is being made here. But yeah, that's exactly um, to your point. But anyway, favorite track by Dua? <laughs> I know all of the songs. I've watched the show, I think, 25 times. <laughs> I had the chance to tour with her yeah. for such a, I, and, and, and be there. So my favorite song is Love Again, mm-hmm. just because I think it's such a good tune and such a good message. Find a way out. I never thought I hear my heart beat so loud. I can't believe there's something left in my chest anymore. But goddamn, you got me in love again. I used to think that I was made out of stone. I used to spend so many nights on my own. I never knew. I'm in love with all the duas, honestly. There's not one I can pick. I'm, I'm obsessed with the Barbie tune. tune that is just yeah, of course. Out. I mean, that must be your ultimate yeah, dream. I was like, <laughs> like, when she told Barbie. me, I was like, oh, what's can going we... on in here? <laughs> what is this? Um, Have you done anything for Barbie yet? No, because I've done Barbie Bratz. Bratz. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> there comes your haunting now. Yes, exactly. <laughs> but we're going back to being sued. <laughs> No, but I love I, I I love breath. Yeah, of course. You're doing a hosting a little house party, or when you have an after show party, you're the DJ though. First drink, what do you play? Five drinks, what do you play? Uh, I'm gonna steal this from Dua because this is uh, what we always say. It's such a good tune, and she's she once it said to me, um, "It's my favorite song to start a night, and it's Moloko, Bring it back. That is one of my favorite tunes as well. So I was like, 
Yes. Um, Shout out to Roshan Murphy, who was part of season one. <laughs> yeah. Molo for bringing me back. Sing mm. it back. What's the name? Bring it back or sing it back? Bring it back. back. Sing, sing it back. back. Sing it back. Bring it back. Bring it back. <laughs> she has such an interesting voice. Like, yeah. It's so unique. And it's such a mood. Oh, it makes you know, a good mood. Yeah. Sing it back. Sing Five of those upper rolls. <laughs> <laughs> you only really want to get me wasted. <laughs> yeah. Mati, can we have five more, please? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where this is going, but. Okay. So, what would you play after? Holding Out for a Hero by Bonnie Tyler. Oh. I need a hero. <laughs> Why? Because from her or from the Shrek soundtrack? <laughs> no, I, I, you know that I don't like Shrek at all. So there's this guy that keeps DMing me, please do GCDS for Shrek. No. And I don't want to disappoint him, but I really don't like Shrek. <laughs> I don't know why, but it's something that I've never got into. Oh, uh, I would put Mia, M-I-A, Paper Airplane. That was a Shrek. Yeah. Is it? But when I came out, And it's one of the songs. If you catch me at the border, I got visas in my neck. If you come around here, I'll make a more day. I get one down in a second if you wait. I fly like paper, get high like planes. If you catch me at the border, I got visas in my neck. If you come around here, I'll make a more day. I get one down in a second if you wait. Sometimes I think sitting on trains. Every stop I get to, I'm clocking that game. Everyone's a winner, we're making our fame. Bonafide hustler. Sitting on trains Every stop I get to I'm clocking that game Everyone's a winner We're making our fame Do you have like a go-to Or when you prepare for a new collection Do you create like an audio mood board That's specific Or just tracks you picked up Or stuff you keep listening to over and over again I don't have the dedication to playlist When I want to do something so Italian I, w I would go for like Amore mio aiutami by Pietro Piccinini <laughs> I love Ennio Morricone, yeah. so like all, all, all of these heavy, powerful tracks. 
And as I said, I always go for soundtracks. Like I really love soundtracks to create. Even just if it's, it doesn't have to be soundtrack of a movie, but maybe the soundtrack of a era. I'm living like in a Dolce Vita. It's such a specific time, mm. the Riviera and the French shake that it makes me come up with the world. And it's such a specific time period. Yeah, exactly. That existed pretty much for five years. Yeah. Well, to go slightly more intimate. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeet. <Don't> no. <laughs> What's your go-to falling in love or heartbreak song? Oh my gosh, I have this. <laughs> so we have so many. Yeah. Uh, we have so many love songs. Who's we? Me and my boyfriend. Yeah. Eat. <laughs> so I, I just can talk about this because it's, it's going to kill me if I don't talk about this. <laughs> One is I want to see you dance again. So it's Harvest Moon by Neil Young. That to me is one of the sweetest songs that you could ever play for anyone. Yeah. Come a little bit closer. What I have to say Just like children sleeping We could dream this night away But there Then is he here with me by D4 David? It's a new, it's a new tune. Oh, that's why. Watch the sun rise along the coast as we're both getting up. I can't describe what I'm feeling, and all I know is we're going. Is that someone? Mm -hmm. Oh, Anthony and Johnson. Anthony and Johnson, mm -hmm. exactly. And Anoni now, but just exactly. released a new album. Also fantastic. Yeah. Hope there's someone who take care of me when I die. Will I go? Hope there's someone who set my heart free. Nice to hold. When I'm tired There's a ghost on the horizon When I go to bed How can I fall asleep in my own Raise my Scared of the middle place between life and nowhere. I don't want to be the one left in there, left in there. So those are falling in love or heartbreak, like or is no, for you the same? No, those are falling in love, love. No, maybe I want to see you. Harvest Moon is, I think, a bye-bye song in a way. And after the bye-bye, or actually, no, when you're in love and you're feeling super sexy, 
What's the sexiest? Song? I love this. This is to me the song of love. Oh, give me love. Give me A love. song for you. in my life and time I sung a lot of songs I've made some bad rhymes I'm getting bedroomized over here <laughs> <laughs> Okay, and then I uh, but then when I when, when after a breakup now I don't remember anymore because it's been so long oh. that I have a breakup but um, I'm always for the song that are not sad. You're gonna see me back on track, dancing and going to the club, but I cannot tell you one one song that I could play after a breakup. So even when you're feeling super sexy, that's nothing. Like, super sexy? Yeah, I'm always about. feeling super you're sexy. What you asking? Not what? Not my life is sexy. <laughs> I think that's the main quote. My life is sexy. I love it. No, but when you like... I, I, I really like Pussycat Dolls to go back. Don't you wish your girlfriend was hot like me? Don't you wish your girlfriend was hot like me? Don't you wish your girlfriend was a freak like me? Don't you? Yeah. Don't you? Don't you wish your girlfriend was raw like me? Don't you wish your girlfriend was fun like me? Don't you? Don't you? Go back to pop slut. You belong to LA, man. Mm, <laughs> there you go. Yeah, I honestly have so much fun when I'm in the club in LA. It's completely different from. What do you from... go out in LA? To the gay district, what I don't oh, even know the names. Okay. I just go into the clubs, in yeah. and out, in and out, and just 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 enjoy it. Love it. <laughs> I enjoy a <your> ride. <laughs> Going back to your go-go days. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Going back to my fantastic go-go days. Exactly. When you're um, getting ready for a night out, here, also here in Milano, do you have like a go-to track that just gets you going? What well, I'm going to pick tonight? What I'm going to dress? What I'm going to wear? Where I'm going to go? When you're out and about with Matty. Every time we get ready, like we, I go through phases. Yeah. So there's moments where I only play the same song for like three days. 24 7 like literally non-stop and then we just cannot listen to it anymore then there's songs that are prohibited because something bad happened during the playing of that song so she says you know you cannot play that song <laughs> and, and and we have to skip the song as soon That's as it so starts like one of my favorite song pop song yeah. was seven rings by ariana grande uh -huh. it was a paris fashion week long time ago i think three years ago i'm not allowed to play that song anywhere why because I got very sick after that fashion week and I stayed home for like nothing serious, but I was really, really fucking sick for two months. So after that, she was like, no, we're not. That's a, that's a nightmare song. Because you were listening to on repeat or just like on one repeat. Moment? Like, so we're not allowed to play it uh, here now. Yeah, yeah, don't play it, please. It's, something <laughs> is going to happen or explode no, no, or not. like... No, no. Did you tell Ariana that yet? <laughs> I don't. Again. I don't want to tell. <laughs> She's going to know now. I'm not even going to the concert anymore. Just to not. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I have to go to the bathroom as soon as they play it. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> well, before we start browsing through your clothes and objects, to wrap up our little chat, if your life would be a movie, what song would you play in the end? And you as Mr. Soundtracks and Imagery, yes, uh, Netflix documentary, what's going to play in the end? <laughs> I think it wouldn't be heavy song because none of my life felt heavy to me. Don't, I don't <laughs> ever get ready for an interview and I, I honestly don't think about things before saying it. Yeah. That's such a bad thing about me. But I think this is truly, because when I do these things, it's because I want to show myself. I yeah. don't want to show a copy exactly. or something that yeah. says, oh, this is what... So I forget the important things, but going back to music, I always love to brief people to compose songs that are really resonate in me for a soundtrack of a show, for a um, soundtrack of a campaign, like whatever I put out, it's literally always the mix of different songs, different movies. Like when I, one of my favorite that I really enjoyed to the max to do was the 
when I designed Mighty Shoes, that is now my bestseller, my mm -hmm. most famous shoe. The one that got just got copied. Exactly. Yeah. It was. Well, well, that was your turn to uh, sue somebody. There you go. <laughs> Let's not open this chapter. Let's okay. say somebody. <laughs> yes. Um, I, 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 I was so obsessed with Dracula. Dracula is one of Bra Bra Bram Stoker's. It's one of my favorite books and movies. And I've watched all the series, all the adaptation of the movie. And when I went to the to to do the soundtrack of the show, I had the chance to work with like a huge orchestra. And I was like, I want more drama. I want violence. Listen to this track. And I would show the track from another movie, Gunsema, or like literally like the most random thing. And in the end, such a good soundtrack. But even when I did other show, the digital show, for example, it has this soundtrack that was made into a vinyl and sold online. It was one of our best sellers for a six months period. Because it was the vinyl of the soundtrack and people were absolutely obsessed. that has to make you feel like you're walking into a new atmosphere. So last show, for example, my full winter show, it was dedicated to my house, my cat, and all the things that I love about my privacy in mm. a way. So these are like original scores, basically? Yeah. So it's not just putting a place, it's actually... No, never. I wow. never play, play... Like for my first shows, I used to play, yeah. like I told you, like... Yeah, yeah. But for all of my show, the one you listen on YouTube, mm -hmm. they're original soundtrack, wow. original scores. But when you were coming into the anyway the venue mm. there was basically a mix of chet baker my funny valentine old new york jazz mm. because i that's that gives me such a piece of art and so i was like as soon as i ran into the venue the day the night before the the show i felt like it was cold like there was a, such a cold atmosphere mm. and i looked at people around me and i was like this is not what you feel when you come to my house my house is usually open door, everyone comes in, stay over, just lay on the bed, just mm. lay on the sofa. And I was like, we have to warm up this this place because it's going to be horrible, mm. like dedicating a show to, to my house and this is the atmosphere, imagine, <laughs> like we're back to Dracula. And so I did this whole playlist about Chad Baker and like jazz. Everyone was so obsessed with the walking in. It was like old Hollywood yeah, kind of yeah, glamour. Yeah. Everyone dressed up, little champagne and, and, and it, it turned out exactly how I wanted it to turn out. Fantastic. Oh, I love that. Well, setting the mood. You're like basically like a director, like setting the mise en scène. Yeah, that, that really helps me throughout my job because I think when you have a creative direction, mm -hmm. whatever you do comes really easy to you because you know where you're pointing at. Like you know the, the you don't know the way, but you know where, where you're going. Mm -hmm. So literally you just have to make it real that's really easy music helps you a million times more than any help like i think the music sprinkles life like gives life to the clothes like when you see girls walking into the clothes with a good soundtrack you've done half of the process well i guess we're gonna leave it there that's the same and we need i agree yeah so it's... maybe if my life had a final score 
would be an original score edited <laughs> written and directed by me <laughs> great so maybe we as an outro track we play one of the originals from yeah, the show yeah love perfect or it would be like I say banana, you say banana. That's, that's, that, that's a, We're going that's, with that. That's, a, like, that's really the mood of my life. <laughs> my life is sexy. <laughs> there you go. Thank you so much for being on air with us. It was Thank a real you. pleasure. It was such a fun yeah. conversation. <laughs> Unexpectedly <Yeah>. fun. <laughs> and it's the upper rolls, not yeah. me. No. <laughs> tuning in this week. If you want to listen to the full playlist, visit areonair.com or our Spotify channel. You can also find us on Instagram and on YouTube at areonair. And a big thank you to my wonderful team at Studio Noi. I'm Armand Nafei and I'll speak to you soon.